Hi everyone, thank you for joining us today. My name is Tim Cheong. I've got my colleagues Kerry Hicks and Anthony Malloy with me and today we're talking all things R&D um, and with the federal budget coming up next month, um, all things uh, tax topical as well um, in the lead into the budget. So to kick us off, Anthony, do you want to give us a, a bit of a summation of the current state of play of R&D, um, given there's a little bit of uncertainty about how things work at the moment um, and what businesses can really be looking forward to? Yeah, look, Tim, it's, it's been a really big year for the, um, for the R&D program with a lot happening around the government's uh, COVID stimulus initiatives. Uh, firstly, we've had Oz Industry um, extend the R&D tax incentive deadline uh, for the 2019 income year to the 30th of September. This was previously uh, the 30th of April. So this is a great opportunity um, for those entities that haven't considered their R&D claims yet to get a claim lodged um, by the 30th of September. Um, this will help, uh, you know, much needed cash flow for these entities. Um, we've also seen significant interaction with the R&D program and the government's JobKeeper and accelerated depreciation measures. Um, it will be important for companies to consider the impact of the expenditure at risk provisions on R&D employees receiving JobKeeper. Um, businesses should also consider whether they can access the accelerated depreciation measures in their R&D claims. So two really key things coming out of the, the government stimulus measures to consider in R&D claims. We've also had uh, the government propose a number of changes to the R&D program. These changes seek to reduce the refundable R&D offset rate and also introduce an R&D expenditure intensity rate for large companies. The proposed changes are currently under review by the Senate Economics Legislation Committee. The committee is due to report on their findings on the 12th of October, so it's something to um, keep, a, keep an eye on. If approved, the changes are currently slated to apply for income years from 1 July 2019. So I would say, I'll briefly say that we hope these measures don't come in due to the lack of uncertainty and the backdated nature of that legislation. And we obviously want to encourage innovation in Australia. So uh, hopefully those changes don't get through. Yeah, definitely a bit of a tough one there, Anthony. Um, I think given that yeah, it's the retrospective nature of it going back into prior year, um, well, we, we, we certainly hope that that doesn't come in um, and that the government looks at, at maybe changing the way um, that program does work when it does come in. Um, Kerry, in light of um, job keeper that's happening at the moment, the COVID restrictions obviously that are happening within Victoria. Uh, what are kind of areas of, of tax change do you think you'd like the government to be looking at and dealing with? Yeah, good question, Tim. Um, obviously, the focus has to be on the economy and getting people re employed at the moment, um, especially um, given that there are going to be changes to job keeper coming up. Um, in the next few months and then post March, it's not going to apply anymore. Uh, so any programs to encourage employment need to be encouraged. Um, but in the meantime, given we're still um, in lockdown in Victoria um, and a lot of interstate businesses are still struggling just depending on the type of industry they're in, federal government really needs to continue to uh, look at how they're going to continue to support small and medium businesses. Um, the other aspect that would be good for the government to consider with the upcoming budget is just looking at um, certain aspects of the tax system that they could look at reviewing and doing some improvements. So things like reducing complexity for businesses, um, thinking about repealing taxes where compliance costs outweigh the revenue collected, um, that should be on the table. Um, they also need to think about how they're going to encourage business investment in the future. Um, I'll leave Anthony to cover off on the innovation side of this, but looking at things like further reductions of company tax rates, um, maybe reintroducing the consistency in tax rates against all companies could be looked at, um, just to reduce complexity, um, look at how we can encourage um, investment in businesses. Um, other areas that could be looked at are things like GST, maybe putting those sort of um, considerations back on the table. So thinking about whether we do need to broaden the GST base to increase government revenue, um, government obviously has a funding shortfall that it needs to look at with the current deficit and the amount that they've spent on JobKeeper and other stimulus packages. Um, the government's also going to be getting less income um, tax from businesses as well, whose business has been affected. So they're going to need to think about how they can actually bring the tax revenue up, um, but make it 
um, in an economic, um, economically good way that they go about it. Yeah, some really good ideas there, Kerry. Um, and I think, as you said, it needs to be balanced because there will obviously be a bit of a hole um, given all the stimulus packages that have been announced um, and enacted over the past six months. Um, Anthony, I guess with that in mind, what, what, what would you like to see in terms of R&D and grant funding um, and trying to drive some of that innovation, particularly investment into innovation as well? Yeah, Tim, look, we, we know jobs are going to be a focus of the budget. Um, I'd also like to see innovation play uh, a key role in the upcoming budget. I'd like to see the introduction of things like a collaboration premium in the R&D tax incentive. This was recommended by Alan Finkel in his review of the program a number of years ago. And this would ultimately incentivize businesses to engage with universities and public research organizations and essentially access an uplift in the R&D benefit on the expenditure incurred with these organizations. I think this would be a great way to uh, increase the spillovers of knowledge between companies and these research organizations. There's a lot of great R&D um, done out of universities and this would ultimately lead to you know, greater commercialization outcomes um, from universities. I think another great opportunity would be uh, a patent box policy. This has been discussed um, over a number of years. Um, essentially, the, the policy would introduce a patent box tax scheme that allows companies who own patents to apply a lower tax rate uh, to profits derived from IP. Um, I think this type of scheme would help promote increased uh, domestic investment in innovation. It would obviously lead to um, more high paying jobs in Australia, and it would also help reverse the erosion of the, 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 uh, the domestic tax base that can occur when income from IP sources are transferred out to low tax jurisdictions. Um, so I think these types of innovation policies would be really good to see uh, in the budget. Obviously stimulating in innovation leads to more jobs in Australia. So uh, there are a couple of the policies I'd like to see. Yeah, great stuff, Anthony. I think you're absolutely right in terms of um, needing to drive some sort of innovation within the Australian environment. And certainly we need to keep up with um, a lot of the foreign jurisdictions given how global a lot of our businesses are and, and the ability to, to travel offshore. So um, we do need to make sure that um, you know, businesses are incentivized to stay in Australia and also internationally, um, they're incentivized to come to Australia for those types of, of industries. Um, Kerry, maybe a final word. Um, obviously, there's a, a lot of things coming up in terms of, of budget. Um, there's quite a few uh, non-legislated bills um, that are still outstanding um, and, and quite a few tax issues out there that, that still need to be dealt with. Um, what do you think are some of those key topics that, that the government should be dealing with at the moment? Yeah, so Tim, we're definitely seeing lengthy delays in the process of legislation getting through Parliament. And it's really unfair on taxpayers, particularly when the measures have a significant tax cost um, or affect the taxpayers' decision making. Um, so we've seen a couple of those. Um, the R&D changes that Anthony's already mentioned um, that are now before the Senate committee. Um, we've had things like the non-residents being denied um, the main residence exemption, um, superannuation guarantee, MSD. Those um, types of measures are taking um, months, if not um, more than a year to get through Parliament, which just isn't great. The big one I think that's coming up, um, especially impacting small and medium enterprises around the changes to Div 7A. Um, we've had significant changes that have been announced, but we haven't even seen draft legislation, let alone legislation going through Parliament. Um, this is something that the government really needs to deal with urgently, um, particularly given some of the changes that are proposed, things like removing the distributable surplus, um, bringing in pre-97 loans, putting all loans on principal and interest terms over 10 years, are going to see increases in deemed dividends for taxpayers, but also the need for businesses to fund higher loan repayments. And just given the existing economic position and the state that some of these businesses are in, particularly from a cash flow perspective, this is really going to need to be something that businesses can plan for. And at the moment, um, we just don't have the information available. So I think that um, in the near future, if not in the budget, um, as part of just the um, normal process of, um, you know, giving us the draft legislation, we'll see some certainty soon. Yeah, fantastic. Um, I think I completely agree there. Obviously, taxpayers, the number one thing they want is certainty. Um, 
and all of these long delays, particularly in this particular environment at the moment, um, are going to be, be quite worrying. So hopefully we do see the government step up, um, make sure that things are a bit more certain um, in the tax landscape, um, and that really gives some, some confidence back to, to taxpayers to go move forward. Thank you everyone for joining us today. Hopefully you've enjoyed um, our, our little tax talk on, on R&D and the budget. Um, I'm sure there'll be a few more topics that will come up um, pre-budget and hopefully we'll see you um, on our next video. Thanks for watching.